Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. Okay, now we are going to do some sort of refresher course for writing the literature. I believe everyone listening have been involved in this process. Well, at least when you have to submit your research proposal for the admission, right? Okay, writing a good literature is very important as it will provide a clear guideline for the researcher to better navigate readers to understand about their research. Well, it's not an easy process, but it's also not a difficult process. The main challenge in literature here is not to write, but to write what you really mean. I am Nozomi Majan, your facilitator for this session, and a little bit about myself. I have been in this education industry for almost 22 years, and my, my background is hospitality management, and my current interest is focusing on the elderly and senior living care. It's a little bit of my achievement. Uh, but don't worry so much if you do not have any publication to date because I also started quite a little bit late to publish where I published only during towards the end of my PhD years but don't follow me my strong suggestion is for uh, to everyone listening here you should write soon as possible okay what are we going to do today? So technically, we will try to cover all of these subtopics. And now let me remind you in advance, although the title of our session is Writing the Literature, generally I will focus, I will not fo really focus on the writing part. Why? Because our writing style differs according to several factors. I think you agree with me on this matter. Well, it can be the nature of your study. It can also be because of your supervisor's preference or writing style. And the list goes on. Therefore, this session will try to assist you towards how to uh, handle literature or to define to you what is literature and also finally to help you in coming up with a good literature. What is literature review? I believe everybody knows what the mean what's the meaning of literature review. Right? Literature review is a selected analysis of existing research which is relevant to your topic showing how it relates to your investigation. It explains and justifies how your investigation may help answer some of the questions or gaps in the area of your research. Remember, it is not a straightforward summary of everything you have read on the topic and not a chronological description of what was discovered in your field. Literature review need to be analytic. It, it needs to be, uh, you have to be analytical and comparative, meaning you are comparing and synthesizing various articles. And again, it is not purely descriptive. Summarizing the articles is not enough. What does the literature review mean to you is important. How does the literature connect with other things that you have read? Well, actually, this is quite challenging, but I believe you will go through it. Okay? Once you get the literature, use it to support or defend your argument, you also need uh, to identify concepts, issues of previously found to be significant and or insignificant. You also have 
to have critical eyes okay where you do not so that you do not overlook or ignore any points of controls next let's let's look at the literature review process as you can see from the slide the process can be quite hectic i just remind you in advance and it also can be quite frustrating especially when the articles needed are not subscribed by the library. Hey, don't worry. Make friends with others. Join any scholarly postgraduate groups or association. And importantly, be good to the librarian. I'm sure they will be able to help you. Okay. As you can see the arrows here, it seems that the process in the literature review is interrelated okay first and foremost you need to find the article okay once you've got the article please read it not sleep on it okay write and importantly please store or save your literature in reliable and various platforms well practice makes perfect right in our case write continuously makes perfect don't worry so much about the language in the early stage just do it but of course you need to improve okay now why literature review is important first because it helps us to understand and critically analyze our research background from here you can better if you are clear about your research background you can better justify your problem statement remember to select and source the information that is necessary to develop a context for your research. Okay? I believe that if you are clear about your study context, then you know how to explain and organize your idea. Remember, literature review helps to show you how your investigation relates to previous research a good literature review write-up should provide a clear picture of the overall content or context being studied literature literature also reveal the contribution that your investigation makes to this field it can be in terms of filling the gap extend extending the horizons or building on existing research etc literature helps in providing evidence that may help explain your findings later i hope everyone is clear until up to this point we are going to move to the next slide which is steps in literature review what are the things that involve what are the steps that involve in literature review okay first identifying the relevant sources okay you have to know the area or the topic of your research clearly so that you know what and where to find the relevant resources if you do not have any clear picture, then you are going to waste a lot of time, energy at this point of, at this stage. We don't want to do that, okay? Next, you are to extract the relevant information only and not to put the overall finding of other studies to your LR to make your LR look thick, okay? The key word here is relevant. Okay, what we're going to do next? 
lock your literature i just wonder how many of you really lock your literature if you are doing it then you are doing good great now i know that many of us read the the lr the literature and then store it in your your uh, mandalay or endnote or somewhere else well i strongly encourage you to lock your literature according to your need and preference because it will greatly help you to write your literature and also assist you in identifying some of the gaps for your study please trust me on this i've been there i've done that okay it really helps and finally when you got all those things you can easily write up your literature review now this is the simplest version of literature log template okay uh, again you can add and adjust accordingly i'm just sharing okay after you have read your literature please jot down the necessary details okay you never know sometimes your panel during your viva they might ask questions such as who's the prominent figure from your area what's the frequently uh, used journal for your study or uh, what is the most uh, data collection used in this kind of studies okay so with all this information you can easily answer those questions because you are the one who did it and you know what you are doing and also it helps to organize your reading and which later on you can come up with a good write up and you can show the trends in your literature okay for example what are the focus of study in your area what is the most data collection method used or even who's the uh, main sample of uh, similar studies or even what's the frequent data analysis adopted well you can even come up with a content analysis paper if you have sufficient information isn't it good right just my suggestion please do okay all right why is it good or important to log your reading yes. it helps you to organize your literature systematically and no doubt it helps you to easily retrieve your information or your literature and of course it is safe importantly it helps you to find the gap for your study remember gap can be in terms of theory use sample of the study data collection or data analysis like for example i'm just giving you some example yeah uh, previous research shows that uh, the sample majority of the sample that have been used for this kind of studies are consumers very few studies explore the perspective of the uh, companies so that can be some of the gap especially in your context okay so you have to know how to uh, really make use of this data again the future research column helps you to better justify the need of your study and also it helps it can also help you in the problems justification for your problem statement okay another reason why it's good to log your literature is it lessen your work for your chapter 2 and importantly it helps to enhance your writing skill why why did i say it lessen your work okay let's look at this as okay i've put everything in the column but of course i do have more uh, columns i just extract some of the things so what i i need to do next during the chapter 2 write up 
I just use some phrase to better connect the word. And please use simple English, of course. So in this case, all the black printed are from the are from the uh, uh, table from the log. And I just use like looking at studies done in Malaysia as the connectors. Again, Peng, 2000 surveyed employees of TQM, blah, blah, blah. And those, these are from the law. Yeah. And another example, in a later study, seed oiling and all those things, I just took everything from the law. It is easy, isn't it? Okay, moving to the next subtopic. Okay, this is another interesting topic, subtopic, okay? Where can you find literature in your thesis? I've always asked this question in every session that I have attended. Majority of the participants answered chapter 2. Chapter 2. Well, correct, it's good. And some of the participants also answered chapter 1. Well, that's interesting. Good. And there are a group of people who say chapter 5. Yes, you are definitely correct. Okay. And there are some people who will ask, why you say correct to all? Well, what do you think? Yes. Literature exists in every chapter. But of course, there carries... A different rule. Now, if you look at this slide, in chapter 1, the introduction, literature helps to briefly define and introduce your variables. Remember, please introduce your variable in the earlier section so that readers will understand when it appear in your research objective or research question. You know, some of the common mistake is students tend to ignore the brief definition of the variables or term used and suddenly it was, uh, it exists, it appears in the research question. So, people will definitely ask, what is this? How come suddenly these uh, terms or variables appear in research question, whereas it was not being well defined in the earlier section? Yeah, such as in the background or the introduction. All right. Now, in this uh, section, uh, uh, chapter also, literature will help to introduce the scenario of your study. Now, you need to have to provide readers about the background of your research. Okay, for example, we are talking about COVID-19. If you want to do something about COVID-19, definitely you will have to provide a brief definition about what COVID-19 is, right? How it affects and etc. etc. Before we reach into we reach to the main issue that we want to discuss, right? Importantly, literature in this chapter helps to justify your issue and support your problem statement. Here, uh, I would like to encourage you to use the current literature for the problem statement. When I say current, it means, for example, now it's 2020, right? So you should have a 2020 and 2019 literature uh, to back up your problem statement. Why? So that you don't have to answer the question uh, of are you sure there's no current study being done in this area from the panel? You don't want to receive that kind of question, don't you? Well, especially those who are doing research in marketing, business and something involved technology, the examiners will really look at your literature in this chapter. I hope it's clear, okay? Next, in chapter 2, what's the role of the literature? In chapter 2, literature here is used to critically analyze and argue the existing literature to better support your study. Okay, meaning that in chapter 2, you detail out 
all the relevant literature and also in this chapter literature helps to highlight the gap and relate to the need of your study in chapter 3 methodology it's quite clear cut literature helps to justify on the methodology used and finally in chapter 4 and 5 in findings and discussion the literature has a function to support your findings and provide a base for your discussion I really hope it's clear up to this point now can we use one literature in several chapters well let's see how to organize your literature review well uh, there are various options on how you can organize your literature uh, and this also depends on the nature of your study and your supervisor's preferences or advice okay uh, from here we can see that the literature can be organized according to topical order where uh, the literature is organized by main topics or issues and uh, emphasizing the relationship of the issues to the main problem okay uh, the literature can also be organized according to chronological order okay here the literature is being organized by the dates the research was published okay and we also have problem cause solution order where literature is organ uh, organized the review so that it moves from the problem to the solutions we also have general to specific order it is also called the final approach yeah from broad to narrow uh, here we examine broad based research first and then focus on specific studies that relate to the topic and we also have specific to general order here what we're going to do is we try to make discussion or discuss specific research studies so conclusion can be drawn from small to big okay so for social science normally the approach of uh, organizing organizing the literature uh, that uh, that's popular popular that is popular is topical order and also general to specific order okay what do we do next? writing your literature okay how to write your literature in writing your literature you need to consider few things first use evidence okay your interpretation of the available sources must be backed up with evidence or support or citation that demonstrates what you are saying or your claim is valid You have to be selective, meaning you have to select only the most important points. The type of information should relate directly to the research problem, whether it's thematic, methodological, or chronological. Third, use quotes sparingly. Well, some short quotes are okay if you want to emphasize a point or if what an author stated cannot be easily paraphrased but sometimes you may need to quote certain terminology that was coined by the author like not common knowledge or taken directly from the study but do not use extensive quotes as a substitute for your own summary and interpretation of the literature. Four, summarize and synthesize. Remember to summarize and synthesize your sources within each thematic paragraph as well as throughout the review. 
recapitulate important features of a research study, but then synthesize it by rephrasing the study's significance and most importantly, relate it to your own work. Now, this is important. Keep your own voice. While the literature review presents others' ideas, your voice should remain front and center. What does it mean? For example, with references to other sources into what you are writing, but maintain your voice by starting and ending the paragraph with your own ideas, statement or wording. And use caution when paraphrasing. Paraphrasing, okay? I do have some problem in to uh, pronounce this word. When paraphrasing a source that is not your own, be sure to represent the author's information or opinions accurately and in your own words. Even when paraphrasing an author's work, you still must provide a citation to that work. We don't want to be involved with plagiarism, so please stay extra careful on this matter. Okay, now, good literature writing consists of all these four. What are they? First, combination of recent and earlier years of literature. You should use recent literature to support your problem statement. I believe that I have explained to you about this just now, yeah? Recent mean this year and last year. Two, synthesize all relevant literature and construct and reconstruct the ideas or literature using your own word. A good review will look at both strengths and limitations of studies conducted and, if possible, to show the gap that requires further investigation and how the present study, your study, may help to narrow or close the gap. Third, it should include current theories underlie the study related study that consider a better one and why, criticism of the work in the area and rationale or purpose of the study. And four, finally, always relate to the study objective or purpose of your study. See, I think I've been emphasizing this for quite some time. Whatever you write at the end of the day, you should relate it to your study context because we want to emphasize it to readers or you want to remind the readers what is our study context, okay? Now, make sure the write-up is simple, short, but precise. Please avoid jargon. Now, I would like to share with you the common mistakes to avoid when you write your literature. Uh, and actually, these are the some of the common errors observed by the examiners when reviewing a thesis. Okay. Now, first, sources in the literature review do not clearly relate to the research problem. What do you think about that? Hey, your literature doesn't support your research problem. So, how do we want to know whether uh, you are your basic your base on formulating the research question is okay or not? Right? Remember also, LR provide a base for your discussion. So, if you do not, if your uh, literature is not relevant, so how are you going to argue or discuss? your findings second your literature do not uh, uh, students do not take sufficient time to define and identify the most relevant sources to use in the literature review 
that are related to the research problem. See, again, please make sure that your resources or your literature are related to your research problem. Okay, third, and critically accepts another researcher's findings and interpretations as valid rather than examining critically all aspects of the research design and analysis. Next, student relies exclusively on secondary analytical sources rather than including relevant primary research studies or data. Student does not describe the search procedures that were used in identifying the literature to be reviewed. It's good for you to provide all this information so that the examiners know that you have been doing it rigorously. Reports isolated statistical results rather than synthesizing them in chi-square or meta-analytic methods. And finally, only include research that validates assumption and does not consider contrary findings and alternative interpretations found in the literature. I hope all those tips could help you to better write your literature in the future. Okay? Now, how good is your literature or what's the critical evaluation of uh, literature? How do you want to know whether the literature is good or not? Okay? Now, among the factors that need to be considered in evaluating a literature are the following. Provenance, the methodology, the objectivity, the persuasiveness uh, of the findings and also the value of the literature. Okay, we go to the first one that is provenance. What do you mean by this? What do we mean by this? Okay, here you ha we have to know the source of the articles. We have to know the author's credentials. Okay, whether the author's arguments are supported by reliable evidence. Okay, Exam example primary histor historical material, whether it is supported by case studies, narrative, statistic, recent scientific findings, and etc. Next, we also must be very careful with the methodology. We really have to read the methodology section of the previous research. Are uh, the techniques used to identify, uh, gather, and analyze data appropriate in addressing the research problem? Was the sample size appropriate? Were the results effectively interpreted and reported? Why this is important? Because if the methodology is not appropriately and correctly done, it could lead to a false finding. So, you want to make sure that the methodology is correctly and appropriately conducted. Next, <clears throat> objectivity. Is the author's perspective even-handed or prejudicial? Is contrary data considered? Or is certain pertinent information ignored to prove the author's point? Well, we have to be very objective on this matter. I mean, the findings must be objective. It has to be backed up with sufficient and uh, uh, reliable data. We cannot just assume things, okay? So, when you read the articles, look for objectivity. Next is persuasiveness. Which of the data's which of the oh sorry, which of the author's thesis or findings are most convincing or less convinced or least convincing? You have to uh, really select, you have to know what to extract, okay? And remember just uh, take 
things that are really relevant to your study. And finally, are the author's arguments and conclusions convincing? Does the work ultimately contribute in any significant way to an understanding of the subject? Bottom line, how the findings of the previous study could add value to your current study. Okay. Here, I also would like to share with you an example. Remember, this is just an example of the outline for a good chapter 2. Okay. Now, a good chapter 2 in any chapter, we should have introduction, body, and also conclusion. So, what are the information needed in introduction? Well, what you can do. Actually, the introduction is um, some sort of uh, a brief description about what you want to cover for that particular chapter and also the details of what you have done for the literature review section. So, what you want to do is you want to reiterate the study and chapter purposes. Remember, this is optional, but it's very good to have. Briefly explain the structure of the literature. Okay, now what, what is to be expected from that, particular, from that particular chapter or what is in the chapter. Explain accordingly to what have been highlighted in the body. Like for example, the uh, the topic that you are going to present in this introduction is aligned with the topic in the body. Okay, describe how you obtain all the literature, the sources, or search engines used, range of publications, years of publication, prominent author cited, etc. Just add what you think uh, will help you or will help readers to better understand your work. Okay? I also give an example of the write up of the introduction. Remember, again, this is just an example. You can adjust, you can write according to your preference. Okay? Now, what, uh, as I mentioned earlier, in this introduction, I just highlight what's the purpose of the chapter, which is this chapter discuss the literature review that supported the current study. And the literature has been exhausted from relevant electronic resources and printed materials. I just inform them, how do I get the data? How do I get the info? It includes articles, journals, trade journals, newspaper and books published in English. The earliest range of publication was 1970s while the latest was 2019. This is just a random number. Various journals have been used among among those sorry some typo here. There. Among those are TQM Journal, Quality Management Journal, Journal of TQM, Journal of Hospitality and Tourism Management, etc. ProQuest, Elsevier, Web of Science, Science Direct are some of the databases used to gain the relevant information. The search keyword used were selected according to the research topic, including quality management, quality implementation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this chapter is made up of four sections. So here I explain what are the sections and uh, what are the things that I covered under those sections. So actually it's just a brief introduction but our readers know what I've been doing for this chapter. Uh, what are the journals I use, what are the search engine that I use and all those things. Okay. In the body, what do you need to write? Well, technically, again, I would like to remind you, please make sure the subtopic uh, need to be aligned with the introduction if you highlight the section that you covered. Here, we should explain in detail our definition. Uh, you can also provide various definitions from various authors. And finally, you want to lead them to the 
uh, definition that you are using for your study. Also, uh, we explain in detail of all the variables that can lead to a clear indication of high of hypothesis development or proposition. Now, when we detail out this, we might want to provide the background of the variables, what have been studied about that uh, particular subject, the relationship between variables, the argument of the variables, and etc. Okay, now the organization of ideas depends on author's preference. But remember to always remind the readers to the study context. And when you have introduction, definitely you have a conclusion. So what, uh, what's, what are the things that you need to write in the conclusion section? See, you might want to recap what you have read, okay, briefly. And present the trends found in the existing literature that you have exhausted. Remember, if you do have the log, this work will be much simple. You just, you might want to just put the log in your literature review section. Well, some people do it because they just want the dissertation to be look thick. Well, quality is important, okay, not quantity. But again, it's good to have that log so that the examiners or readers can understand where do you extract all those information. Now, importantly, highlight the gap that you found in your reading, okay? Why you need to highlight the gap? You need to highlight it so that you can better lead the gap to the purpose of your study. So, people can comprehend, okay, it makes sense, there's a gap here and that's why this uh, author wants to do this research. I believe that's all from me. I really hope that this small contribution helps. I would like to wish everyone listening here good luck, all the best, and ultimately, I wish everyone here to graduate on time. Should you need any further assist assistance, I'm happy to help. You can always contact me at those uh, email address okay now i'm sorry because uh, the email address for norzu1161 norzu161 is actually at uitm.edu.my okay so with that thank you for listening bye